web to lead is basically a you know process in which you can use for creating a form which you can put on your website okay you can design a form from salesforce you can put that form on your website and when someone comes and fills in that form the data can directly go into the leads table in the salesforce got that so you can design a form which can be put on the website and that website when someone you might have seen these kind of things you know on uh, the websites of some companies they, on the contact us page you go and they ask for your phone number email id and stuff right and they say someone will contact you so usually what happens with a website uh, the form that you fill that uh, thing actually goes into the backend sql server database so most of the times these websites are connected to the sql server database which is uh, in the backend all right so all that information that you enter there that goes into that sql server database now because salesforce uh, you know uh, will have all the leads ultimately into it so salesforce has introduced an option where you can simply uh, have a salesforce uh, salesforce designed form on the website and when someone comes and fills in that form that information can directly pass on to your uh, the leads object all right so how do we work with that let's go and see that it's a simple option just need to go to setup under setup you have the option of customize under customize you have leads okay and uh, under leads you have this thing called web to lead right so you can go to this web to lead option uh, you will have that option of create a web to lead form I told you you can create a form so you can straight away go and create this form here now you will be asked which all fields you want on the form like the first name the last name email company city country whatever you need you can keep the ones that you don't need you can remove those like I don't need the company name I don't need the city I don't even need a country I don't need the state instead I need a mobile field okay so let's say these are the four fields that I want on the form. Let me add a couple of more. Like city I need, state I need, country also I need. So let's say these are the few fields that we want. So we are done with that part. The fields are there. Now after you have selected the fields that you want to be displayed on that form you have to uh, define a return URL here. What is a return URL? A return URL is once the person has filled in the form, uh, you know, once he clicks on the submit button, where will your page go, right? So it would return some other page. So this can be anything, this can be anything, this can be whatever you want. This can be a company's website, this can be some other thank you page, this can be whatever page you want to take the user into, right? So when you submit a form online and then you click on submit button, uh, submit button then it takes you to some page, right? Some location. So that is what uh, is going to be done here. Now once you have defined the written URL, the next thing that you have to do is you have to click on the generate button. Click on generate copy the code okay once you have generated uh, you, once, you, once you click on the generate button it will generate the code for you you just have to copy this code and you have to share it with 
you have to share it with the uh, sales team oh sorry the web designer or the webmaster the person who is designing the website okay now you don't have to do anything manually basically this is something which the web designer would do he just needs to take this code and put it on the website all right but because your web designer does not know how to operate with salesforce that is the reason why you have to create the form what all fields you need you have to do that and you will have to give it to the web designer okay that's it see copy and paste the sample html below and send it to your webmaster so this is there copy this entire thing send it to the webmaster let's do a small uh, example okay so what we'll do is I'm gonna send this code to all of you and uh, you guys will just need to open a uh, notepad put this code and save it as HTML format okay so that is what we have to do just give me one minute I'm gonna mail it to all of you Send someone in this. Okay, I've just sent it to you guys. Okay, I just want you to do a small activity. Copy that code, open a notepad, okay, and save that in .html format. Right, so uh, done, open a notepad, paste the code, save the notepad as .html format. I want one of you to share your screen. Arpan, can I make you presenter? Yes, I can. Copy this code, open a notepad, paste this code, go to file, save, or save as whatever. Okay. Now give it a name .html, wherever you want to save it, yeah. Call it web2lead.html. Okay. So this is what we all need to do. Arpan, can you just repeat that step once again? Paste it on the notepad. Go to save or save as. Yeah, save as. 
Like the location? Yeah. Dot .html. .html is what we have to give. You can cancel it now. Okay. Now go to that particular location where you have saved the file. Open that file. You will see it opens as an HTML file, right? In the as a form. Yeah. Okay. So you know. Uh, the alignment and all these stuff is something which your webmaster will take care of but this is how the form is gonna be right now if you use this form to make any entry that will directly get into the double uh, onto my salesforce leads table so Arpan try to make an entry make any entry yeah Just uh, make a bit of change in the email ID and mobile number. Don't put your actual email ID and mobile number. Okay. Email ID maybe just make some change somewhere. Okay, I think it will by default it will take uh, It's not by default, it's uh, something that uh, you know uh, we have defined. The list of states and uh, countries is what we have defined. So based on that it's taken. Submit. So return URL takes you to the return URL page, that's fine. But let's now check whether the data got actually created in my developer edition or not. So for that what we have to do, for that I just have to go and click on Just give me a minute. First, let me share my screen. So we just made an entry on that, right? And that was from a different computer. Now that data should have got into my leads table. Let me go and check if that has actually come to the leads table. So we'll be able to understand whether that is actually working or not. So I go to today's leads and click on go. Who entered this data? Uh, me, Arpan. You did not enter that Arpan Arora wala data? Why does it show this one only, not the other one? Did you change the name? At the, no. Instead of Arpan Arora, did you put some other name? No, I put Arpan Arora only. Ah, sorry. This one someone else created, right? So Sarpan so Aurora did not get created for some reason. Can you just try it once again Arpan? For sure. Let's see what's wrong there. Uh, there's something which Samvit created that got created.
let me know once I made the entry. Then we can login uh, redirect it to the same uh, sales factor. Yeah, now it has got created, see? Got it. So this is how it is. So uh, this web to lead is a very useful thing because most of the companies who are you know, using Salesforce, most of them will have a website and uh, this is something which will make life a lot more easier for these people in terms of you know uh, providing a form from where the end users can easily uh, enter the data into the system got it or uh, not just end users your customers clients you know from your website anyone comes to your website visits the website and uh, they are able to you know uh, use that form to enter the information and this directly gets into the salesforce okay so usually what is the process? Usually the process is that as I told you uh, the website is connected to a backend SQL Server database and this data goes into the SQL Server database and uh, once this uh, thing goes into the SQL Server database after that uh, you know someone extracts it and then puts it in the, into the CRM thing. So which is a longer process, this is an easier one, this is you know something which uh, directly works. So you don't have to worry about anything, all the leads that are coming to your uh, database, they are you know directly connected to this. So that is how it's working. Alright, clear on this, please let me know if anyone has any questions or doubts. Okay, so that's one thing. Now the second thing that we are going to talk about is the next thing that we are going to talk is web2 case. So the way we have web2 lead is similar uh, way we have a web2 case option. So this option is available only for two objects, one for leads and the other for cases. So you can have a similar web2 case form aware, you know. Uh, for on your website using which your customers can raise a case ticket or complaint whatever you call it right so cases table we have an option called web2 case available okay so it's same I mean there is no difference I just want you to see where exactly you find the web2 case option and uh, there's no difference between this and that one actually So where will you find this thing? You will find it in under self service. So go to customize, go to self service and then you have an option of web2 case. And the process is all the same. Web2 case HTML generator into this one. The process is all same. Select the fields and then define a return URL and then generate. That's it. So again, you can have uh, this form populated on the website so that anyone who wants to raise a case does not have to call the call center and all. They can directly raise a case uh, from your website. Alright, please let me know if we have any questions or doubts here. You're good? Okay, nice. So that's the second thing, web to lead and web to case. So you know with this uh, 
we are you know quite done with the declarative part of the course right so declarative and the functional side of it now as i discussed that uh, we will be getting into the programming uh, side of it so you know we'll start our programming session from tomorrow so today i don't think we have any more topic to discuss i would just want to quickly you know talk about a few uh, points here okay one is some of you might want to go for a certification now. so as we know that there is a dev 401 certification and there is a dev 501 certification okay so what we start talking uh, tomorrow is dev 501 what we have talked so far is dev 401 certification okay so dev 401 certification which is the basic uh, basic developer certification or it's also called developer essentials this uh, that is more of what we have discussed so far okay so in 401 certification you do not have any programming whatsoever okay so and this is the first certification that you have to do you cannot go and do a 501 directly without clearing 401 all right so a 401 certification is what is required first of all so i think some of you will be going for a dev 401 certification so i just want to give you some hint or idea on what a 401 certification is and how you can prepare for it and all so first thing that you should do for dev 401 certification is download the study guide okay so salesforce uh, publishes this study guide for this 401 certification you don't have to do anything you can just go to google search and search for dev 401 study guide you will find it okay the pdf that you find this is the study guide so first thing you should have the study guide available with you study guide has all the details that you need to know about the certification exam certified force.com developer exam okay this is a small pdf and it has all details related to your uh, certification exam what kind of exam what kind of questions how much time what uh, how many marks everything okay So you will have 60 multiple choice, multi pull uh, select questions, time should would be 90 minutes, passing score will be 68%, registration fee is 200 US dollars, retake fee is 100 dollars, so everything, references, no hard copy or online material may be referenced, so you will not be allowed to reference any material. For this certification, there is no prerequisite. Okay. Now the most important part that I want you to you know understand here is uh, use this document for understanding the exam outline. What all topics and what weightage for the topic. Like data model has a 32% weightage. Data model is the you know a section which covers everything about um, you know creating the data model, understanding the permissions, organization wide default roles, and you know that's a part of it. So objects, fields, applications creating them, controlling the access to them with the permission sets, with the profiles, with the roles, organization by defaults, all those things will be covered under data model. So this is the biggest uh, part. Okay. Then the next big part is business logic which is 23%. Okay. So I mean for doing certification you just need to understand the weightage of things and then uh, based on that you need to understand. So 32% is completely on the data model. Uh, which I told you which includes the profiles, permission sets, organization by default sharing, role sharing settings, uh, creating objects, fields, applications. So that is uh, something which comes under data model. Business logic is 23%. Okay, so business logic 23% will cover things like uh, 
you know the four things basically it has formulas validation rules workflows and approval process these four things are part of business logic okay formulas validations workflows and approvals then you have user interface 15% so user interface includes things like page layouts and stuff data management is 10% so this is easy to clear because data management there are not too many things for you to know okay so data management is 10% reports uh, is 10% I guess reporting is 10% reporting is 10% so we are at 55 70 80 90 and then 5% for application design and concepts overview and application design concepts so overview of force.com is 5% I mean this is miscellaneous and again app concept, app design concept is 5% so there is not much that you can do about these two things I and mean, whatever you understand that's more or less uh, you know, it so you don't have to worry about this part but uh, this seems to be a good section reporting because in reporting I have uh, you know told you there are not too many things or it's not something which is very complex it's an easy score zone reporting I don't think you should have any problem scoring in the entire you know all the questions correct but there is not much there data management is an easy score zone uh, where you can score easily okay business logic is one more easy score area where you can score the entire thing okay now data model is again out of 32 percent you can you know score maximum of them correctly so this is one area where you have to have be you know solid with your concepts of profiles and all that stuff right business uh, data model is one area where they will have concept based questions so you, know, you will be tested on the concepts that if this is the requirement so there, you know case based questions can be there so this is where you have a good scope of you know uh, answering and get, you know get uh, scoring but uh, you have to be a little careful there user interface is again you know not uh, you know something which is easy that does not have too many things right so 15 percent for the user interface so you have to be a little careful with the data model thing because that is the biggest section and uh, the questions there can be a little tricky um, for data management for reporting they, they are going to be straightforward questions so you know that is how it is and for business logic again it's going to be straightforward questions right so you have to you know understand you know um, which all areas are uh, you know good for you which all are your strong areas where you can score easily and then you know, try and score as much as possible uh, in those areas all right tell me if we have any questions on this and now for you to prepare uh, you know on the certification part if anyone you know plans to prepare for the certification the best resource for studying which is available now you know the syllabus right now where do you read from okay because certification requires you to read a bit of theory as well first thing you should be solid or you know very very sound in the concepts that is one thing but if you want to read more uh, on the theory part because some questions can be very very objective so uh, for those kind of questions what you can do is you can always use the salesforce help okay this is the best place to read for uh, you know, uh, salesforce related concepts i'll show you where exactly you have to go for example you uh, wish to uh, learn more about validation rules okay the best place for you to learn more about validation rules is you can go to any particular object go to validation rules I mean, just go to the validation rules page you can go there from any object 
and then click on help for this page. So this help for this page button is something which will take you to the details of the validation rules. Correct. So this is the best way of uh, for preparing for your certification exam. Tell me if anyone has any questions on this. So that's more on the certification side I and mean, I do not know how many of you are willing to do that. Uh, now or later or whenever but this is you know how you can approach your certification thing even if you plan to do it at a later point of time and it's a simple certification I mean does not require more than three four days of study I mean if you're able to put uh, five six hours in a day four days of study should be fine yeah. otherwise you know maybe eight to ten days if you're not able to give that much time two three hours if you're putting eight to ten days should be fine you know? so that is how it is All right. So, um, any questions on this or anything? Else? Can I have the microphone on mute, please? Thank you. Okay. So uh, any questions on this or uh, anything else? Uh, anyone? Any doubts, questions, anything that you want to ask? So we are good uh, with these concepts, right, so far? So next thing that we are going to get into is the programming thing. So uh, that is something which we will start tomorrow. Uh, we will start with the visual force programming, alright? I would just... Uh, quickly recommend a link so how many of you are from uh, you know programming uh, background here how many of you have worked on html earlier html is what i'm trying to understand because we'll start our uh, first programming language which is visual force and uh, that's quite similar to html so uh, who all are uh, having some sort of knowledge on the html i have knowledge Sambit knows. Ravi Teja, what about you? Yes, sir, I do have. Vishal? <coughs> okay, great. Nice. So, we just know basic HTML. Uh, all of us, that's fine. No problem. So, uh, you know, we are going to start uh, with visual force, which is pretty similar to HTML. So, and then we will move into the Apex part, which is similar to Java. All right? So uh, that's it. I think uh, if we do not have any other questions or doubts, I think we are uh, quite okay for today. Tomorrow we are going to meet same time, same link, and uh, we'll start with the visual first. Uh, I give just a couple of this video. No? Hmm? Sorry. I just upload the video. Okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'll do that. Okay. Okay, thank you all. See you all tomorrow. Bye.